have the M2 MacBook Air now for a good few weeks. I've been putting it through its paces, so let's find out if it's any good. What's up guys, welcome back to Michael's Tech Talk. So here I am back with my full review of the M2 MacBook Air. So let's get into it. So first off, my first impressions, let's talk about how this thing looks. Now, this is a slimmed down lighter version of the new design that the MacBook Pros came in, the 14 inch and the 16 inch. They have that sort of flat, squared off edges. And I'll be honest, I really like the design. The design of it's really sweet and it's sleek and it's lightweight. And surprisingly, this design is slimmer than the M1 MacBook Air. And I personally, when I first seen it, thought, oh, that's gonna be a bit thicker than the MacBook Air. But due to the wedge design of the M1 version of the MacBook Air, this thing is slimmer because it's just flat and it's quite deceiving as to how th uh, thin and light this thing is. So top notch for that, it is absolutely awesome. Midnight's the best color. Fight me, come fight me. Let's, let's talk about specs. Now I didn't go for the base model, I went slightly up a bit from that. So this is the eight core CPU, eight core GPU. I went for the 16 gig of RAM instead of the eight gig, but I only stayed with the 256 gig SSD because I don't typically edit from the disc itself. I edit directly from my own SSD, which runs off Thunderbolt. So storage space isn't a big factor for me, if I'm being honest. So that's why I went for the more RAM instead of the SSD, but we'll get into that a bit later. This comes with two Thunderbolt 4 ports, USB-C and a headphone jack, and MagSafe charging is now back, which uh, is really good for this machine because now we're not giving up a USB-C port to be able to charge the laptop which is a big thing because now we have that bit of freedom. I love that. Notable features on this MacBook, the keyboard. The keyboard layout is very, very similar to the MacBook Pro 14 inch keyboard. And I'm not mad at that at all. It's a great keyboard, great typing experience. The keys are very, very well laid out and the typing experience is top notch. Like I mentioned, MagSafe charging, fantastic. Good strong connection for charging the, the MacBook. It charges really quick and you're not using up a USB-C port, so what's not the love? The display is noticeably different from the M1 version. This is the new 13.6 inch compared to the 13.3 inch from the M1 MacBook Air. So what we're getting is that similar design again to the MacBook Pro, we're getting a notch. We're getting that extra bit of space. I do love the dimensions of this laptop and surprisingly, it's it gives you a strange feeling because you do get that little bit more screen real estate without actually making your laptop any bigger. If that makes sense, it's kind of weird. Yeah, I, d I do like this, I really do. Of course, we have our notch, but we'll talk about that a bit later. And battery life, battery life is as expected. Uh, Apple quote up to 18, 19 hours worth of battery life on this thing. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Definitely a better battery than my M1 MacBook Air, so, yeah, it's an improvement. So yeah, let's talk about the notch. The notch is here to stay, people. <laughs> We're not getting away from it. Personally, my views on the notch haven't changed since I reviewed the 14 inch MacBook Pro. I think the notch on the MacBooks is pretty pointless. If you don't have Face ID in there and if it's not doing a particular function, I think it's pretty stupid to be fair. I still don't understand why we don't have a whole punch webcam here, but the notch is here to stay. We just gotta live with it, so. It is what it is. Within the notch then, we do have the new 1080p webcam and it is an improvement over the iPotato 720p camera, but let's be honest, there's not many cameras that aren't an upgrade over that webcam. What's up guys? This is the webcam and mic test on the M2 MacBook Air. So this is the new 1080p webcam, which is the same as what's in the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So yes, we've got the dreaded notch. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think of the quality. Is it any better? Surely it has to be better than the M1 MacBook Air with its 720p iPotato webcam. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. And what's the microphone like? Is uh, the audio clear? Is it good enough? Let me know in the comments down below. So let's talk about performance on the MacBook Air. Now, I'm not gonna get into SSD benchmarks and all this other, let's be, let's be fair, all this other crap that come out about M2 MacBook Air because half of the tests and benchmarks that were done on the my M2 MacBook Air for SSDs for 90% of people using it 
it's not going to mean anything to you and it's not going to make a difference so i'm not going to talk about that today but i am going to give you my experiences with this machine comparing it to the m1 and even comparing it to my m1 ipad pro those are the machines i use for editing for this channel and that is what i'm going to base my performance tests on so my tests have been based on real life use now i what i use my macbook air for is i split the editing of all the videos on this channel and all my other like thumbnail creation and other bits and pieces i split all that between my m1 macbook air and my m1 my ipad pro so those are my two go-to machines so this was thrown right into the mix for those tests what i did was i was working on a project i have multiple layers within that project of a roll b roll i have animations i have background music i have quite a bit and it, all of the footage was recorded in 4k so that gives me something to work with so to make the test fair i also then used the same application across all of these machines to start with on the ipad pro i was using LumaFusion, and thanks to m1 and m2 and having rosetta i can actually run LumaFusion on these macs that gives me an even playing field then to do these tests so to keep the test as realistic as possible i use the same variables across the board so i use the same application i use LumaFusion. I used the same SSD which contained all my raw footage and I exported the project and every variable on each machine was exactly the same. So it was the same footage, same cuts, same background music, same animations, same everything. Everything was all the same so that I wasn't going to have any sort of rogue results coming up when I was doing these tests. The result of all those machines was pretty much the same. Now the MacBook Air, the M2 MacBook Air did come in a few seconds faster. But between the iPad Pro and the MacBook Air, everything was much of a muchness to be honest. So yeah, there was there was a little bit of improvement with the MacBook Air, but nothing groundbreaking, if I'm being truthfully honest. So then what I figured I would do, I would put the M2 MacBook Air against the M1 MacBook Air. So what I did then was I recreated the project, the exact same project in DaVinci Resolve and in Final Cut Pro. So again same variables same ssd same same everything and then was able to do comparisons then of that as well so what i found in the davinci resolve test was that the m1 macbook air was actually about 20 seconds faster at rendering the same project than the m2 macbook air which was pretty interesting but when i recreated the project in final cut pro uh, it was very interesting because the m2 macbook air was nearly one minute and 10 seconds faster at rendering than the m1 macbook air was which was pretty mad is it an improvement over the m1 yeah it is an improvement and i'll be truthfully honest everything i never had an issue with it i didn't have issues with performance or any sort of throttling the machine didn't seem to slow down the machine didn't even seem to get warm so yeah is it an improvement yes it is an improvement it is a bit quicker it's a bit sleeker did i have any issues with it no did it freeze did it show me any error messages no did it even get warm no from that regard yeah it was pretty good and i can't really fault it so to sum it up m2 macbook air is a little bit faster than the m1 macbook air is it worth the money that i'm not sure and hear me out so the m1 macbook air can still be bought from apple and can still be the base model can still be bought for 999 okay so it's it's not bad for what it is. The M2 MacBook Air starts at 1249 and £250 of a difference between these machines. Is there £250 worth of a difference in performance? I'm not so sure that there is. And that's before you decide to spec this up. If you spec this up, this will go up in increments of £200. So if you want to go from the 8 gig base model, 8 gig, 256 gig base model, you will go up £400 to go 16 gig and 512 gig SSD. So that takes you up then to 1650 for the M2 MacBook Air. Now this is where I would say this is where bargains can be had. Now, as you as you guys know, if you've watched this channel, you'll know I am a big, big advocate of uh, grade A refurb stuff. And Apple's refurbished site does brand spanking new machines with a full year warranty. You can add Apple Care to them. You get all the benefits of a new machine, but you get it in a plain white box. Right. That same base model M1 MacBook Air, you can go on the Apple Refurb and you can pick that up for about 849 right? That's a base model, M1 MacBook Air. That's pretty cheap. However, if we'll just remove the M1 for now, let's talk about the M2. 
So yes, some people may go out and buy the base model M2 MacBook Air, which will come with 8 gig of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, right? Fair enough. That could suit quite a lot of people. However, if you are a bit like me and you want to spec it up a little bit, you want to double up the RAM, you want to double up the SSD, that's going to take your price up to about 1650, right? Go over onto Apple's refurbished site now and look up a refurb 14 inch MacBook Pro, an M1 Pro MacBook Pro for 60 quid more You'll get a 14 inch display, ProMotion 120 hertz refresh rate. You'll get ports, USB-C ports, HDMI, card reader, MagSafe charging, a bigger battery, cooling fans for 60 quid. Why would you spec up one of these? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. You're gonna get a machine which has been pretty much rebuilt out of all brand new parts, brand new body, brand new everything. The only difference is they've slapped it in a white box and they've refurbished on it. You get the same warranty that you'll get with a new machine and everything will be brand spanking new. For 60 quid more, I know what I'd be buying, and it wouldn't be one of these, although this, is, this does come at midnight, which is nice. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, yeah, I, I'm all for going out and buying stuff brand new and getting that sort of new feeling, new text mail, woohoo, it's all good. But, you know, with that Apple certified refurbished especially, you, you're getting the same experience. It's just a white box. And let's be honest, what do you do with a box? You throw it in the bin. You know, so again, for me, uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments, guys. What do you guys think? Personally, for me, you get more bang for your buck. And is that what it's not all about in this day and age? You set yourself a budget, you go for the highest spec in your budget. That's the only advice I can give you. That about wraps it up for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. If you did, smash that like button for me. Massively helps me out on the channel, guys. And don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring that little bell to be notified of new videos just like this. Until the next one, guys. I'll catch you later.